Good day, everyone, and welcome to today's seminar and panel discussion on investment opportunities in Thailand's innovation ecosystem. My name is Adrian DeVoe, and I'm an economic development consultant at Research FDI, working in partnership with the Thailand Board of Investment, or BOI, as your moderator for today's session. Thank you for joining us. Prior to getting started, I'd like to address a few housekeeping items for today. Many of you have asked questions during the registration process. Therefore, the speakers have ensured to answer and address as much as they can during the panel discussion and Q&A session at the end. In the interest of time, we may also look to open the floor for additional questions at the end as well. Since we're working with multiple time zones, the panel discussion questions were predetermined and arranged to ensure an efficient discussion. We do have a lot of content being presented in the span of an hour, so you may notice a quick transition between each segment. Today's webinar is also being recorded and will be made available online within the next few days. Now I would like to turn over and introduce our speakers and panelists for today. Firstly, we have Ms. Vorawan Norasucha, the director of the Thailand Board of Investments New York office. Ms. Songlin Ploimi, deputy secretary general of the Thailand Board of Investment. Dr. Jean Krit Kanatarana, the Executive Vice President of the National Science and Technology Development Agency, as well as the Executive Director at the Eastern Economic Corridor of Innovation. Also, Dr. Ponad Chairatana, Executive Director at the National Innovation Agency. And last but not least, Mr. Narumsak Jivakanun, Executive Vice President of International Business Operations at PTT Global Chemical, PLC. Now I'd like to turn over the presentation to Ms. Vorawan Norasucha of the Thailand Board of Investments New York office, who will begin today's session by presenting an overview on why companies are choosing Thailand as a destination for Southeast Asian expansion efforts. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian, for your kind introduction and good morning, everyone. Uh, some of you might have been visit Thailand either for travel or for business purpose and enjoy every moment during staying in Thailand with the reasonable cost of living and uh, quality healthcare standard. Even we are now facing with the global challenges from COVID-19 pandemic, Thailand still uh, gaining worldwide recognition for the quality of healthcare system with the top rank of the International Health Index. All people can access to the healthcare program provided by the government, such as the universal health coverage or the social security Medicare. The government intends to vaccinate 70% of population against COVID-19 by the end of this year. However, Thailand is taking more precaution as the rising of COVID-19 uh, cases around the region. So uh, the government announced that now uh, require all travelers to be quarantined for no less than 14 days. Thailand is not only well known for the travel destination, but also uh, the ideal business location as well, uh, particularly uh, uh, the high technology and innovative company from US in various sector. We are also the R&D and innovation center from multinational company, particularly from US and many countries in Asia, such as, such as Japan, China, and South Korea. Let me show you what Thailand's key competitive advantage. Um, Firstly, being situated at the heart of Southeast Asia, the strategic location based in connectivity across mainland Indochina, uh, the government has been investing significantly in infrastructure facility that leading to an excellent transportation network with our neighboring country, and that's leading to 
the easy access to the major market in other regions. As an open economy with the liberal economic policy, Thailand as key member of Association of Southeast Asian Nations has signed a number of free trade agreements which can help the investor to access to the major market with, with the preferential tariff rate. The Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership or the RCEP is now effective and has covered 30% of the world population and the RCEP is very critical for the region response to the COVID-19 pandemics and play an important role to build the resilience through inclusive and sustainable post-pandemic economic recovery process. Thailand also have a very strong supply chain in many industries. We are not only one of the largest uh, exporters of food and high quality agricultural products, but also the top exporter for electronics and electrical appliance. Thailand has played a stronger role in supply chain uh, with the relocation of overseas smart uh, electronics operations to Thailand over the past two years. We are also the top exporter of the automotive and parts. Before COVID-19 pandemic, more than 2 million units of automotive were produced and 50% uh, of those were exported. And that's because Thailand is the largest uh, producer of petrochemical products uh, in ASEAN, which can serve the strong supply chain for the plastic and rubber parts for heavy industry. And now we are moving forward to the advanced uh, automotive like uh, electric vehicle. For the medical sector, Thailand is the top medical travel destination with 700 billion US dollars in revenue from this segment. Uh, medical device is also a very fast growing sector with the highest international trade value among Southeast Asian countries. US is the top supplier of medical technology, accounting for 21% of the total imports. And all of these are some of our target industry that under the national policy, Thailand 4.0 and Thailand Board of Investment as the uh, principal investment agency is focusing on. We are providing the uh, incentive package covering tax incentive and non-tax incentive, also the business support services and comprehensive uh, information for all investors. In addition to the competitive advantage mentioned earlier, we have been improving our laws and regulation and also the legal ecosystem to ensure that we can offer a better business environment that is highly conducive to attracting multinational entity and use Thailand as their regional hub, uh, which can be proven by the international competitive ranking. For the infrastructure side, uh, Thailand has been developing the Eastern Economic Corridor or the EEC uh, in the eastern part of Thailand, including major investment and activity in a number of projects, such as the uh, high-speed trail linking eastern part with Bangkok, the capacity enhancement of the seaport and airport, also the uh, development of the innovation hub, which can support the high technology industry. My last slide will be highlighted by the next session about Thailand's innovation ecosystem and how we can support the business operation in Thailand. Uh, now let me turn over to our moderator, Adrian, please. Thank you very much, Ms. Barawan. Uh, it is certainly very impressive to see how progressive Thailand has been uh, in terms of investment attraction to the region uh, with the development of their strengths, uh, strongest industries, as well as the position that the country is taking on to further evolve its advanced infrastructure. Um, now, I'd like to turn over to our panel discussion segment of the webinar. Uh, in this segment, our panelists and speakers will answer questions regarding support and incentive programs, key industry sector opportunities, strengths and advantages compared to neighboring nations, human resources and development programs, as well as ongoing partnership and collaborative opportunities in the country. I'd like to address the first question to Ms. Songklin of the BOI. 
Ms. Song Klin, we have learned from the previous session some general information about the BOI and how the organization could support potential investors. Could you elaborate more on the BOI's incentive and support programs, specifically to technology and innovation companies? What kinds of activities and or sectors is the government primarily focusing on at the moment as well? So thank you, Adrian, and good morning, all participants, and thank you very much for joining our webinar today. Um, when talking about incentive, may I repeat again, you know, uh, the director Warawan already mentioned about, you know, uh, our uh, incentive uh, be because I have to say about incentive because, you know, we are the government agency that has responsible for investment promotion and we promote investment by granting incentive. So it is our tools, you know, to attract investment from overseas. Um, we have Just a few minutes. I have to show, you know, this is our incentive, the standard package of incentive, you know. Um, normally, our activity that eligible for promotion, uh, some activity will get less incentive, some activity will get more incentive, but this is all the incentive that we can grant according to our investment promotion law. For example, corporate income tax exemption. Uh, this incentive may be important for the company that has the high profit because if you get this incentive, that means you don't need to pay tax, you don't need to pay corporate income tax. And also sometimes if it is the priority activity, it is special activity that we would very much welcome to invest in Thailand, maybe you get additional 50% reduction of corporate income tax. Also for machinery and raw material that you have to import, to be used in your project or your business in Thailand, will be you get exemption of the import duty as well. This is all, you know, the tax incentive. We call the tax incentive. And on the right hand side of this picture, you will see that our non-tax incentive. When we talk about non-tax incentive, we mean facilitation that you know BUI can support the investor to do business in Thailand. And if you are a foreign company, maybe you if you invest overseas, you need to have, or you want to have 100% ownership. I would say that if you get promotion from UI, also you can have 100% foreign ownership. You don't need to have a partner in Thailand. For the land that you will use for your factory or your business, also you get promotion from UI, you can have the land ownership. But if you don't get promotion, you know, you cannot, on land in Thailand. I think it's similar or the same as other countries. And the most important one is work permit and visa. You know, we can facilitate executive or management or technician or expert that is working on promoted project. It is easier to, you know, submit and request or apply for visa and work permit to BOI. We will facilitate you if your document is ready, it's very fast, you know, I can claim that only three hours you can get visa and work permit. Um, and I would add more, you know, if you ask the question how we get incentive, you know, we will consider your activity, railway of technology, or the low in supply chain, and sometimes, you know, we consider location of the factory or your business, because we would like, you know, to welcome investment in some area so we some area you get more incentive and if it is technology or innovation activity you know if you just look at this slide you know there are you know two uh, color the blue one and the purple one the blue one okay is the normal one but if the purple one you know on the left hand side you will see that is the technology based incentive or innovation include in this one um, incentive will be more you know in I give example in this slide is 10 years but no, no, normal one the highest is only eight years in the blue one and most of all if you add more on research and development or innovation or if you have the technology training in your project 
you add more value to your project, you will get more incentive as well. And this just summarize, you know, the dashboard of incentive, you know. Uh, you see number eight, you know, and you draw, you know, the line, you know, to section eight, you will get the first, the first column is 10 years plus exemption of machinery, exemption of import duty on raw material for R&D if you have R&D or innovation in your project. And for raw material also, you will get, you know, it's more than normal activity. And this just to focus again that if you have technology development, research and innovation, you know, the, the top one, you know, I show this slide because I want to show that, you know, in addition to normal incentive, you know, if you have this kind of activity in your project, you will get extension of the period to get exemption of the tax from BUI, additional one year, two years or three years. And plus, you know, the tax amount that you are going to get, you know, from UI if you are doing innovation, R&D, and technology development, tax amount will be 300% of your investment. Or if you have the advanced technology training, you will have 200% of your total investment. And this, you know, our focus, I would say that, you know, I talk about technology innovation because I want to say that our focus of investment is I would like to welcome you know the high technology investment or innovation activity in Thailand you know and if you are doing business in technology um, industry I would you know recommend you this area EEC because you know uh, Dr. Warawan, um, uh, Director Warawan already mentioned EEC, you know, I would, you know, would like to focus more that why we recommend if you are a technology company, innovation company, you should go to EEC because EEC has advanced infrastructure, you know, and has, you know, supporting industry and has some facility that can welcome investment in technology industry. For example, in this area, you know, we, we have the deep seaport, two deep seaports. We have international airport. We are going to have the new airport. And also in this area, we have innovation park. We have digital park. So this is all new activity. Besides infrastructure, also incentive that you are going to get from Thailand Board of Investment will be more, you know, add up you know, more and more if you are in the EEC area. So this is all the incentive, you know, package and facilitation from Thailand Board of Investment. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Song Klin. Um, it's very nice to see uh, attractive incentive programs offered uh, in order to help attract FDI or foreign direct investment into Thailand. Um, next question, um, I would like to address to Dr. Jean Krieg of the uh, EECI. So the, Dr. Jean Krieg, the National Science and Technology Development Agency or NSTDA, is grooming a big project within the EEC called the Eastern Economic Corridor of Innovation. Could you give us um, an overview of this project? Is Wangchen Valley aiming to be the Silicon Valley of Thailand, for example? And are there any prioritized innovation sectors uh, for the EECI? Well, uh, thank you, Adrian, for, for the questions. And good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I'd like to thank you, the host, for inviting me to join the panel today. And uh, with regarding to your answers, uh, to your questions, uh, I'd like to say that EECI will be a seat uh, for a Thai-style uh, Silicon Valley. And we will achieve that together with uh, the, in partnership with uh, local agencies, uh, local uh, industries, local community, as well as our international partners. And 
by telling you that, let me introduce uh, EECI. But first of all, let me uh, introduce you uh, to, to NASDA, which is, uh, sorry, uh, which is the uh, organizations that are developing the uh, EECI. NASDA is on the National Science and Technology Development Agencies, basically a national research institute with four main missions, research and development, technology transfer and commercializations, human resource developments, and science and technology infrastructure developments. At a glance, uh, NASDA have uh, roughly 3,000 employees, of which uh, over 700 uh, PhD holders. Uh, we, each year, we contribute to roughly 2 billion US dollars of socioeconomic impact to the countries, and we help induce uh, 400 million US dollars something in science and technology investment. And uh, we transfer technology and knowledge to over 360 enterprise per year. And we generate uh, 450 IPs and publish uh, nearly 700 publications uh, annually. Okay, in terms of platform technologies, we focus on five areas. Uh, in digitals, uh, we focus on AI intelligent systems, advanced electronics and sensors. In uh, bios, we focus on bioscience, biotechnologies, biochemicals. In materials, materials and manufacturing technologies. And in nanos, nanostructures, nanoprocess technologies. And of course, energy and renewable uh, technologies. NASA also an organization that are uh, operating four major innovation ecosystem in the countries. That is the Thailand Science Park, the Food Innopolis, the Southwest Park, Thailand, and the latest and uh, perhaps the biggest of the, of the four is the East Ethnic Corridors of Innovations. Okay, and now let me move to EECI. As for EECI, we see EECI as an innovation hub connecting research and investment across Thailand. Uh, this is especially in the target uh, sectors that Director Warawan already mentions uh, in both bioeconomies and, and, and modern uh, smart industries. And we link all this investment with the uh, universities and uh, science park as well as uh, companies that are doing research in the countries. And to do so, the government uh, will invest in chair in uh, translation of infrastructures that will support scale up of research uh, result, as well as uh, uh, supporting the localization of advanced uh, technology from abroad. So you will see the uh, activities in the pilot plans, test beds, sandbox, uh, uh, technology demonstration plans to support uh, scale up and technology localization, as well as techno economic feasibility studies at EECI. In terms of physical development, uh, the basic infrastructures of uh, EECI is already completed uh, as of late. Uh, and the uh, construction of uh, EECI headquarters is progressing according to plan. It is now under 80% constructed. So we expect to complete the, the constructions, uh, the completion of the details by third quarter of this year. And the soft openings of the facilities will be sometime in the second quarter of next year. In terms of technology platform, uh, uh, we are developing uh, numbers of technology platforms for bio industries. Uh, we are developing uh, the multi-purpose and uh, open access bio refinery pilot plants. We also have smart greenhouse and, pilot and, and plant factories for, for modern uh, agricultures. We also have smart farming demonstration site uh, that are uh, spread uh, uh, throughout the uh, uh, three provinces of EEC. We are also planning the uh, modern aquaculture facilities in the countries, uh, in, in the EECIs. And for digitals or, or smart industries, we are developing the uh, smart manufacturing centers that will targeting the uh, uh, supporting the uh, Thai uh, local and uh, local industries in their industry 4.0 journeys. We are also developing the uh, connected and autonomous vehicle proving ground 
uh, as well as zinc ion battery pilot plants uh, in EECI, so to support uh, modern automotive industries. UAV, the unmanned uh, aerial vehicle sandbox is uh, now uh, being developed in the EECI uh, in partnership with the PTT groups and, and the uh, Civil Aviation Authority of Thailand. This is uh, uh, more or less ready for operations. And besides all those facilities, we also, uh, the government also invest in uh, major uh, synchrotron facilities that would be the largest one in, in Southeast Asia and one of the uh, larger facility in, in Asia. This one will have, uh, uh, will be very similar to the one that you have in Brookhaven, Long Island in, in New York. So that uh, what we are doing in uh, EEC to develop the isn't economic corridors of innovations to support the investments of uh, advanced industry in, in the country. Thank you. I'll return the microphone to you, Aidan. Thank you very much. Uh, much appreciated. Um, now, um, what I would like to ask uh, next uh, with regard to um, our, our, our first round of discussions, I would like to address uh, the question to Dr. Ponad. Um, Dr. Ponad, um, could you uh, give us a brief overview um, of the National Innovation Agency? How does the NIA support the innovative ecosystem in Thailand? And are there any specific areas or sectors or emerging, emerging industries happening in Thailand at the moment? Thank you, Adrian. Uh, I believe that the first two speakers from BOI and also from NASDAQ already uh, give you an insight regarding to financial and tax incentive and also some specific physical infrastructures on science, technologies, and innovation. I would like to introduce National Innovation Agencies, or uh, NIA. NIA is uh, national agencies uh, working on uh, developing new startups, uh, tech companies, and also innovation-based enterprise. And we work closely with private sectors and investment and capital markets. Uh, in this regard, I would like to, to share our uh, working and operational framework uh, based on our innovation diplomacies. Uh, we are working on four specific dimension. The first one is on enhancing and expanding innovation investment in very specific uh, sectors and also accelerating uh, both local and also international corporate venture in, in the countries. And the third one is on developing area-based innovation in both Bangkok and also in, in provincial and uh, some leading cities in Thailand, and also working closely with uh, some uh, innovation cities all around the world. At this moment, we have around 30 countries and around 10 cities that we are working closely with as a landing pad and also a launching pad for both uh, private sectors and also uh, capital uh, investment. And the last one is on developing ease of doing innovation and startup business. Next slide, please. Uh, before the COVID-19, we started to work closely with our partner in, in the state. Uh, we have had our Thai pavilion uh, at South by Southwest in Austin, uh, Texas in 2019. We mainly focus on creative industries, music, art, and recreation. That's what we call market. And also we work closely with uh, so-called deep technology in bioscience. Uh, we brought uh, some of our uh, startup and also uh, tech SME to join World Congress on industrial biotechnologies. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and also we have a very uh, long experience with our partner in Japan uh, on a big scale investment in tech uh, translational research into uh, business uh, development around up to 100 to 300 US million dollars, mainly on biotechnology. And we, we recently closed uh, our deal with uh, Israel 
uh, innovation authorities on working as a matcher between uh, Israel startups and Thai investor and also Thai startup and investors. Next slide, please. Uh, this, the second dimension that we are uh, working recently is on accelerating corporate venture. In this slide, you will see uh, a map of uh, both uh, international uh, venture capital company that's already landed in, in Thailand and also a lot of uh, so-called big large national corporation in Thailand that they already have established their own so-called corporate venture working with uh, universities and also uh, startup companies. Uh, this include uh, agriculture service manufacturing and also retail and wholesale, uh, which I would say that we are uh, among the most diverse uh, so-called venture capital market in Southeast Asia. Next slide, please. And uh, this is uh, the universe of startup in Thailand. We have around 2,000 startup with around 11 sectors. At this moment, we are working on two specific uh, sub-universe. Uh, the first one is on deep technology, which include AI, uh, robotics, immersive technologies. We work closely with a tech provider in Thailand and also uh, MedTech because of the COVID-19. And we uh, extensively, extensively work on uh, our strengths of the countries lies on agriculture and food. Uh, the second uh, sub uh, universe is on content based innovation, light aesthetic innovation, music, arts, and recreation. Next slide, please. Uh, that's why we join hand with our uh, large natural corporation in Thailand to establish international uh, accelerators in specific two sectors. Space F is stand for the first uh, accelerator and incubator in food tech, which we mainly focus on uh, grooming and accelerating deep technology startup companies from around the world. We already launched the second batch uh, since uh, uh, last year. Uh, this uh, initiative, we join hand with the biggest tuna can companies in, in the world, which happen to be Thai companies uh, called Thai Union. Uh, you in America may be familiar with Chicken of the Sea. Uh, this brand uh, belongs to uh, our companies and also uh, King Oscar as well. Uh, and also we work closely with uh, Deloitte as well to, to uh, target and also to headhunt uh, high potential food tech companies to land in Bangkok. The second one, we work with uh, one of the biggest Thai conglomerate uh, in agriculture and also uh, Kubota on uh, precision farming and also urban farming we call it road tech accelerator the same uh, platform that we work closely with SF. the next uh, season we are going to have the third accelerators mainly focus on ai uh, robotics and immersive technology with one of telecommunication providers next slide please because we we tend to work mainly on deep technologies and we invite around 80% of our uh, accelerators from all around the world. We we, at this moment, we have uh, from Europe, from America, Singapore, or, or even Hong Kong. That's why we join hand with uh, one of the leading Thai university in science and technology, Mahidon University, to, to develop incub incubation and also food lab at the state of the art so that our uh, accelerators and also incubators from all around the world can enjoy our facilities and enjoy Bangkok because the lab is in, in the heart of, of, the, of the cities. Next slide, please. And this is uh, the egg road as well. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the third one, we mainly focus on area based innovation. Uh, we work in the concept of innovation districts. And I believe that is quite similar to Silicon Valley or even in Cambridge in, in Massachusetts that uh, big firms, universities and municipal work together. This is the biggest plans that uh, Thai large national corporation join hand together to transform Southern Bangkok into uh, the next cyber tech uh, district. Next slide, please. And we, 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 we have around 200, uh, square meters of innovation uh, space in Bangkok, waiting for uh, both startup and also investor to invest in, in, in the heart of the uh, Bangkok downtown. Next slide. 
not only in, in Bangkok, but also in Chiang Mai, because in Chiang Mai, we have around 10 universities. And Chiang Mai happened to be uh, the most uh, promising cities for digital nomad and also uh, for people who would like to work in tech and who would like to, to live uh, in a very uh, high cultural heritage cities. That's why we develop a concept of uh, a city of innovation with municipalities. And we have uh, state-of-the-art national research and also science parks over there waiting for both uh, digital and also uh, content or even deep, deep technology or even space tech companies to land in, in Chiang Mai. Next slide, please. Apart from that, we work closely with BOI on uh, smart visa. That's why we create global startup hub uh, office that we uh, will bring ecosystem uh, to, to you so that you can mingle and also to get along with uh, our a very wide brand ecosystem in three uh, cities. We we name Bangkok as a food tech Silicon Valley of the world, Chiang Mai is a heritage and also EEC, EEC definitely. Next slide, please. Uh, that's why we join hand with BOI on smart visa. We, we mainly focus on a startup and also investors. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I appreciate the, uh, the answers and the very comprehensive overview, Dr. Panad, um, with regard to the National Innovation Agency and how they help every step of the way uh, for companies looking to uh, perhaps uh, establish themselves and innovate in the country. Um, our next uh, set of questions will be directed to all three panelists. So I will uh, announce who I'd like to, uh, who we'd like to have answer first and foremost, uh, and in order. So um, I guess what would be the most important strengths and advantages that Thailand would like to point out? So for example, ones that would make Thailand stand out from neighboring countries as the innovation hub or technology enhancement region of ASEAN. Uh, Dr. Panad, I will ask you to uh, give an insight on the NIA perspective. I think there are two specific uh, strong points for Thailand. The first one, we are among the, the leading countries in a global value chain. Uh, you can range from agriculture, uh, food products, uh, manufacturing, to even service and also the second one, you can see that uh, apart from a very strong, uh, high uh, and long value chain that's we connected with the world uh, from, from, uh, from seven seas, I think uh, the roles of a large national corporation play a very crucial role. The Global Innovation Index last year uh, already pointed that Thailand is among number one in, in uh, around 131 countries that uh, the, the ratios of research and innovation investment among uh, private sectors and government, we are, we are number one in the world last year, meaning that uh, the large type corporation, they are very active on research and innovation. There are 80% belongs to the, uh, the so-called private investment. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bernard. Um, next, I would like to ask the same question but from the EECI perspective. So Dr. Jean Krit. Yep, thank you, Adrian. Uh, from my, my perspective, I can think of four areas that will make uh, uh, the investment in technologies uh, in Thailand have advantage over our uh, nearby neighboring countries. First, uh, I'd like to point out the infrastructures, especially the infrastructure that are being developed at EECI at the moment. Uh, as many of you might know, uh, the translational research infrastructures are not very common in Southeast Asia, and especially the one that uh, allow public access like uh, what EECI is developing, that is uh, rare in, in these regions. Second, I'd like to point out that uh, Thailand is blessed with uh, abundant bioresources. When I, when I talk about bioresources, I'm talking about biomass, I'm talking about agro-produce, I'm talking about microbe and m size from rich biodiversities of the countries. And I'd like to point out that uh, Thailand, uh, 
by Nasdaq, uh, we are hosting one of the world's largest uh, micro bank uh, in the world. And this micro bank uh, would uh, present uh, the opportunity for investors to, to look into and, and take opportunity to harvest the benefit from this uh, uh, micro that has to offer to the development of advanced product in bio industries. The third thing that I'd like to point out is uh, on the market. Uh, uh, I think uh, Thailand have a sizable and expandable market. This is related that, uh, that related to Thailand is being one of the manufacturing hubs uh, in, 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 Asia, in Southeast Asia. And uh, we have an extensive uh, supply chain network with our neighboring countries. So whatever being developed here, whatever, be, uh, what ever being used in the country successfully is likely to be uh, adopt, adapt into neighboring countries. So the areas like automation, robotics, and smart cyber physical systems is one of the areas that see uh, important need in manufacturing uh, in, in Thailand and uh, neighboring countries. So if you have advanced solutions, you can come to Thailand and localize it here and expand it in the countries and definitely it will be uh, flyovers being adopted in the ne nearby uh, countries. And the fourth and not the, not, not the least, huh? uh, I like to point out ease of doing innovations. EECI is uh, a project under the umbrellas of EECs and we are working closely with the EEC office and the BOI office. Uh, as well as having a strong connection with the research communities across the countries. This will make doing innovation in Thailand ever easier for our uh, investors. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Jean Cri. Um, and on the BOI side, looking uh, from its perspective, Ms. Song Klin, could you share us some insights? Yeah, thank you very much, Adrian. Okay, the uh, our guest speaker, our two guest speaker already mentioned a lot of you know uh, strength of Thailand in terms of innovation or technology, and I would say a few words about you know investment side. Um, what I will tell you about the advantage or strength of Thailand in terms of investment is not for innovation or technology enhancement, but it's for all investment or all activity. When you are considering to invest in any places, you will consider infrastructure, you know. So I will reconfirm again that Director Warawan already mentioned, you know, in her presentation about the infrastructure development project in Thailand, you know, uh, the current one and the future one, you know, so I will repeat that Thailand if comparing to our neighboring countries in ASEAN, I can say that we have the most advanced infrastructure to welcome innovation activity or innovative investment and technology enhancement activity because this sector, you need um, very good infrastructure, you know. And the, the other factor, our strength of Thailand in terms of investment. Um, we have, you know, Dr. Panat already mentioned a little bit about uh, the multinational companies that are doing business in Thailand. I would say that again, that uh, we can claim that Thailand is, you know, one of the top destination for investment in ASEAN. And we already have a lot of multinational companies doing business in Thailand in many industry. For example, automotive industry, electronic, petrochemical and plastic and so on. So these industry, they already developed supply chain in Thailand, supporting industry in Thailand. So if you invest in Thailand, you can connect, you know, to these multinational companies because they have, you know, many sectors. They are doing business in many sectors. So you can support, you know, or to be their suppliers. 
And also, you can utilize the supply chain or supporting industry that already there in Thailand. You know, I would say again, we have the strongest supply chain in Thailand, you know, especially automotive industry. You know, we have more than 2,000 company in this sector. So I would say that if you invest in Thailand, you don't need to be worried about supply chain and supporting industry and infrastructure. So this is all the strength of Thailand in terms of innovation hub. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Sunklin. It's very nice to see each and every organization really working together in terms of uh, providing opportunities for foreign direct investment um, from really every level um, uh, of, and size of business, really. Um, our next question, again, will be uh, addressed to all three panelists. Um, and I'd like to ask, from a human resources perspective, um, of course, HR is one of the main concerns when companies are looking for locations to expand their businesses. Um, so what would you say are some of the efforts from each of your organizations towards HR development or human resource development in the field of technology and innovation? Are there any local academic institutions involved as well? So I'll ask um, Ms. Songklin again, um, how does the BOI help with HR and development programs? Okay, again, I will talk about investment promotion, you know, because our function is, you know, mainly on the investment promotion. Um, the human resource development is one of our priority sectors or area that we would very much welcome the investment, especially from the countries, you know, or the company that has the potential you know, and uh, when we talk about priority, it means, you know, this uh, project or this company or this business get more incentive comparing to, you know, normal activity, you know. And also besides you know, investment in the, for the company that doing business in human resource development, but if you are, you know, investing in other activity, but you have, you know, the human resource development project or some courses inside in-house of your company in the project, you also are eligible for, you know, additional incentive besides the normal incentive that you will get from your activity. This is all, you know, the um, measures of BOI to promote investment in human resource development. And, you know, the other thing that I would like to say is now we um, BUI has the measure, you know, to welcome the expert to work in the target industry. Um, for, uh, we call this measure is smart visa. I show, I show my slide. Okay. Okay. This one, smart visa, is one of, you know, our major for human resource development, you know. Um, Dr. Pan Art already mentioned a little bit on this, you know, they, they cooperate with BOI, you know, for welcome the expert or talent from overseas to work in our target industry. And target industry in uh, Thailand is the you know, innovation or technology industry. Um, this, this visa is special. It's, it's a special visa that uh, provided for talent and provided for senior executive or investor or startup, you know, that has the business in Thailand, you know. And why it is special? Because, you know, normal visa, maybe you get only two years visa, but smart visa, you will get four years, you know, uh, double. Uh, period. And also, when you hold smart visa, it means you don't need to apply for work permit. Normal, normal visa, after you get the visa, you have to apply the work permit at the Department of Labor again. But if you hold the smart visa, you don't need to apply. It means you hold this visa, you can work in Thailand. And also, this 
special visa is extended to your family as well, your spouse and your children. Your spouse and children, if they, they can hold the smart visa and then they can work in Thailand as well. And because we think that these people can work, can work and help Thailand you know, to be more developed on the human resource. So this is all the measure of BOI regarding human resource development. Thank you. Many thanks, Ms. Songklin. Very comprehensive aid and opportunities from an HR de development perspective for the BOI. Um, now I'd like to hear about the NIA, uh, NIA's perspective uh, from Dr. Pon Ad. We focus on two specific group of people. The first one is on young, young talent, uh, new generations. Uh, mainly on uh, stimulating themes or science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics, so that we can incorporate with uh, around 47 Thai universities, including some regional, uh, leading regional universities on enhancing uh, new generations of entrepreneurs and also new co-founder company. And at the same time, uh, because of the, the quantities of the student, uh, we would like them to trans, trans, translate their own mindset into the entrepreneur and also uh, professionals in tech and innovation companies. That's why we have a special scheme for the students. Uh, for uh, priority, another priority, we mainly focus on uh, professionals, uh, managers, and also developing ecosystem that both Thai co-founders or managers can link with international uh, companies and also start up through three specific tools. The first one is on innovation districts in Chiang Mai, in Bangkok, and also in, in Chonburi, so that we can uh, enhance the, the opportunities that they can meet and build in trust among so-called uh, co-founder and also the potential collaborator and partner in the future. The second one is on working as a bridger and business matchers between international innovation potential that would like to land in Thailand. And the last one is on uh, trans transforming ease of doing innovation business into realities, mainly focus on specific areas of innovation because uh, the global value chain of specific innovation sector is different. That's why we like to tailor made uh, sector by sector. This is the way we would like to develop uh, human resource in uh, so-called systematic way. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ponad. Um, and uh, from the EECI's perspective, Dr. Jean Clied, would you care to uh, elaborate? Yep. Uh, the Human Resource Development Platform in the EEC areas is hosted by the EEC office. Basically, uh, the main program is called EEC Type A and Type B models. Both are demand led, meaning the industry will, will, will basically work with the local universities and, and Voc uh, vocational college on, uh, to create a, a, a curriculum. For type A models, it's demand-led formal education. So you work with uh, universities uh, to create a, a curriculum that are fit with the, your need. And, and at the end of the day, when the, the student graduate, they, they go to work directly with the companies. And for type B model, it is uh, sort of a certified short courses uh, for reskilling, upskilling of the industry personnel. And as for EECI, we will supplement the EEC models with uh, our uh, EECI Academy platform, which will address the uh, areas that are close, closely linked with our activities and will uh, match up the gaps uh, on the very high ends and the long tail part of the human resource development, the, the uh, upper ends, uh, the advanced uh, program will be advanced skills and entrepreneurship development, as well as industrial research personnel development. For the long tail ends, we are looking into STEM education for school and vocational students, as well as uh, working with the local communities to uh, uh, help them develop into smart farmers so that the sort of uh, overall pictures of human resource development platform in EEC, EEC areas. Thank you.
Thank you, Dr. Jean Um, And for our last round of questions for the panel discussion, uh, again, I will like to address to all three panelists. Um, and I would like to ask, let's say that there is a US or Canadian based company that would like to bring technology and innovation into Thailand, but it doesn't know how, uh, doesn't know much about the country. Would you be able to provide some examples just to get ideas on any potential ongoing projects or partnerships between your organizations, uh, local Thai companies and foreign companies? Uh, any specific fields or future collaborations you're expecting from North American companies? Uh, Ms. Song Klin, I would uh, pass, the, pass the mic to you. Okay, thank you. You know, it is uh, the thing that I would like to tell all participants as well, you know, you know, if you are a foreign company, American company, and you don't know anybody in Thailand, the first contact is BOI, you know, and BOI can, you know, link with other agencies, both private and public uh, sectors, you know, and for the company also, you know, we have one unit in the BOI, you know, it is the uh, Thai Enterprise De Development Division. Actually, it takes care of the Thai company, but in terms of uh, responsibility, they, uh, they have the function to link the foreign company with the local company, also some educational institution or some you know, public sector or other uh, association. This unit, you know, normally, you don't need to contact them individually. You can send the email and requesting them, okay, could you please, you know, I'm looking for a supplier, I'm looking for a joint vendor or partner, you know. This unit can help you, you know, to link with uh, the one that you request. And we provide this service for free of charge. You don't need to be worried. And there's a lot of example of American company that utilize our service, for example, um, for and General Motors or uh, Western Digital or Seagate. This is Amer all American company. So this is what I have to say that don't need to be worried. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sunklin. Um, and uh, from the NIA perspective, uh, Dr. Ponad, uh, could you share some insight as well? Uh, since we have an extensive experience regarding to uh, international business matching on innovation. Uh, for example, we work closely with Japan for, for decades and successfully uh, uh, developed a big projects on, on tech transfer, transfer and also investment. Uh, that's why we create global uh, innovation hub or, or, or global startup hub in Bangkok, Chiang Mai and EC to service uh, international uh, potential, uh, not only investor but also company that would like to partner with uh, Thai companies. Then we, we we try to make it as a one-stop service and work closely with BOI regarding to uh, BOI incentive and also we were taking care uh, uh, on on site in a very specific city that we can uh, work closely with uh, Thai business association and also university that we can link them to to all startup and also companies or even investors. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ponad. Um, and last but not least, uh, from the EECI's perspective, Dr. Jean Kid, could you share some insights as well? Sorry. Uh, this is uh, to show you some examples of our U.S. partner that we have been working with uh, uh, in in the past, and uh, some uh, many are ongoing at the moment. Uh, but uh, just to let you know that what we are keen in working with our partners would be in the areas of uh, uh, developing of the high values products uh, uh, from our local. Uh, by all resources. And we also looking uh, forward to working with partners who like to localize advanced technologies for the Thailand uh, and ASEAN market. Also, the, in, as you know that uh, in the advanced industries, uh, uh, 
uh, joint research, joint collaborations between companies and universities and, and research institutes uh, is something that, that uh, are must. So we are encouraging the uh, collaboration between international firms, international research institute with local counterpart. And of course, as I mentioned earlier that we, the government have invested uh, in a number of advanced translational research infrastructure at EECI. And so share use of this infrastructure is always possible and joint development of talents to fit the need of the investors. And if you have any other win-win partnership arrangement, uh, partnership uh, uh, models, we of course would like to hear from you and together we'll sort it out and make it a win-win for everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Jean Cred. Uh, and thank you again to all the panelists for the comprehensive answers to all our questions in today's panel discussion. Um, in our second to last segment, um, I would like to turn it over to Mr. Narong Sak, uh, uh, the EVP of International Business Operations at PTT Global Chemical PLC, who will provide an overview of PTT GC and GC International's role in investment attraction to Thailand. So through various opportunities such as strategic investments, partnerships, and joint ventures, PTT Global Chemical plays a pivotal role uh, in continuously developing the nation's economy. Thank you. Good morning to uh, ladies and gentlemen, all participants and panelists. I'm very pleased to be here today uh, to walk you through a real life example of how a company from a private sector could benefit from working collaboratively uh, with various stakeholders, including Thai government sectors, POI, for example, EEC, etc. And also equally important, uh, working with uh, various business counterparts from uh, many countries around the world to set up and grow, uh, been growing our business uh, since the uh, incorporation of our business back uh, 30 plus years ago. So. The company uh, that I'd like to give uh, you ex example is the uh, is PTT GC, or in short, we call our, ourselves GC. I think this is a, a little bit of a busy map, but uh, uh, let me just walk you through that real quick before we get to the the the, uh, the example. Uh, GC is a chemical and petrochemicals uh, flagship company of uh, of uh, the parents called PTT. PTT is a uh, national or uh, energy companies of Thailand uh, is the largest uh, uh, business uh, uh, established in Thailand. Is the, the in terms of market capitalization is around forty billion US dollar. PTT business model where th they would have multiple businesses, but all businesses integrated uh, very closely among uh, within PTT group flagship companies, starting from the uh, upstream from the left hand side, oil and gas, LNG, coal moving to the uh, midstream natural gas, oil trading, technical engineering, and downstream business, which is retail, refinery, petrochemicals, and power. Uh, where GC business uh, operated is the segment in the middle of the downstream, which is the refinery petrochemical, and we continue to grow our business further to the uh, value chains to the downstream, get closer and closer to the end use market. Uh, next slide, please. Now, going back to the history, how the whole uh, uh, growth uh, originated back in 1970s, when first uh, Thailand discovered the oil and gas, natural gas in the Gulf of Thailand. That's how and, uh, and when the whole thing gets started. Since then, um, uh, we brought in uh, the uh, onshore, the natural gas resources and continue to add value to natural resources through the value chain that I presented to you in the previous slide. So in the um, in the 80s, well, that, that went the first infrastructure of the projects, natural gas separation, the first petrochemical plant was set up. And then we were fortunate to, to be involved in that uh, time frames when we put in the first uh, ethylene cracker, uh, taking the natural gas from raw material from the Gulf of Thailand to build our business. And over time, through many like, uh, waves of investment, we grew our business from the original 
plant, which is around 300,000 ton a year of petrochemical capacity to today. So we now own and operate around uh, 10 plus million ton a year. And we, we grew our business from a very small plant uh, to now become a uh, regional and uh, potentially become a global uh, play in the petrochemical and chemical fuels, uh, which I'll elaborate, elaborate to you in, in a minute. Uh, over time, we use different models in terms of growing our business, including uh, green fuels, uh, brown fuels, organic growth, building the plant, uh, and also uh, uh, consolidation and m and And equally important, we also form many, many uh, partnership joint venture along the, the way to uh, uh, help us to grow the business. And the on the right hand side, you will see that over time, we also uh, in this uh, history, we also help to uh, encourage the downstream business into the various industry sector, including uh, the automotive business, electronics, construction, so on and so forth. Uh, because it takes the raw material from petrochemical and chemical industry and then use that uh, in the various applications downstream. So the, the whole journey of 30 plus years has uh, been uh, built along the concept of the uh, Eastern Economics Corridor uh, back 30 years ago. At that time, it's called uh, Eastern Seaboard Project. And you will see that this is just one example of the success story of how working to, uh, together collaboratively among various stakeholders could benefit not only the private sector, but also the, the whole economies of Thailand and the, the region as a whole. I think at the bottom, I think we're not at the bottom of the slide. Go back next, please, uh, yes. I think while we're also building the, uh, the business and we also uh, very, uh, take, uh, pay a lot of attention into the, uh, the environmental and also social sector, I think we are very proud of uh, GC being uh, the number one uh, ranking in uh, Dow Jones Sustainability Index, DGSI, uh, number one in the chemical sector for two years consecutively. And hopefully uh, that we will continue to uh, strive for the right balance between economics, uh, environment and society. That will be our goals. Next slide, please. Going forward, I think we, we clearly now uh, align ourselves uh, 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 strongly and uh, closely with uh, the future of the mega trend, which also broadly consistent with uh, EEC uh, 12 target new S curve or new platform. I think we will continue to expand uh, downstream uh, and integrate it and add value to raw material and hence uh, and provide as a competitive raw material in, co in collaboration with uh, various partners to stimulate the investment downstream in these, uh, those 12 sectors that EEC is targeting it. So it's not only the, uh, the chemical side, but we also uh, been growing up on the green and bio side as well. Uh, this includes uh, building infrastructure, raw material based on bio material, uh, bio-based material. You heard from uh, one of the panelists earlier that Thailand is one of the largest agricultural based country with abundance of, of different types of raw material not only for the agricultural and, and food sector, but could also be a raw material for industry can, chemical bio-based material as well. And on at the bottom, you will see the, the logo of uh, various uh, international companies that uh, we've been partnering with, uh, within Thailand and also uh, on a global basis. And with two days, we have about 31 partners and 25 joint ventures in Thailand and also around the world. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a example of how uh, GC see our role in terms of being a host, good host to work uh, collaboratively with uh, a partner. I think typically, I think we would provide a competitive raw material, feedstock, infrastructure, including land, utilities, uh, technical services, uh, maintenance, so on and so forth. And also, uh, we also have a, a pre uh, sizable and modern R&D infrastructure with uh, scientists and technical um, experts uh, working uh, with GCs and also our partner. Uh, the right-hand side are just some example of the, uh, the project that we work with uh, various international companies set up business in Thailand. Uh, we, will, we will, would be very pleased and very welcome to uh, explore this type of collaboration with uh, potential business partner from the US and also 
other country around the world. And historically, uh, we have been uh, investing uh, quite extensively in the past couple of years uh, to set things up uh, to get ourselves be in in a good position to host investment in EECs uh, for the next chapter of the uh, economic growth. Next slide, please. Just this is the uh, the closing slide that I have. I think we'll talk about the uh, investment and how we set up business in Thailand. At the same time, we have been also been growing the business around the world. You will see on this map an uh, example of the footprints in uh, in GC business, uh, as well as the, our partnership and joint venture uh, in Asia, uh, as well as in Europe and also in in America. In the U.S., we have facility in Texas, in Ohio, and also myself. Uh, I'm, I'm based in Houston, where we have uh, a teams. Uh, situated uh, uh, in, in Houston, as well as in Boston area under the entity called GC International. And the our interest in our core focus is to explore uh, investment opportunity in uh, various uh, sectors uh, and M&A as a joint venture and also venture capital. Uh, I think we are looking to uh, discuss and explore some opportunity, particularly in the digital platform, clean technology, advanced material, and bio and life science. So those are uh, the footprint and, and, and network that we've established, and hopefully that would provide sufficient uh, opportunity and outreach to all, all the potential uh, uh, partner in the future and collaborator to discuss, see what, where it would be best fit to uh, set up business and invest uh, anywhere in in the uh, emerging or or mature uh, economies, uh, including uh, bring the business to invest back in Thailand to support EEC's uh, strategy. So I'd like to just close my presentation and we'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Thank you, Mr. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Narong Sak. Much appreciated for the uh, introduction to GC's inter GC International's role into helping develop partnerships for, Thai uh, for entities looking to uh, invest in Thailand or vice versa. Uh, now, in the interest of time, I know we, we're uh, running out of it very quickly. Um, we're going to move on to uh, our next um, session, which is a Q&A. Unfortunately, we only have uh, uh, the opportunity for one question. It's one question that came recurring um, uh, within the registration process. I'd like to go ahead and address this to Ms. Song Klin. Um, it's with regard to the COVID protocols once again, but more so on the business travelers perspective. Um, is the COVID protocols for business travelers the same as general population? Thank you. Um, okay. Yeah, during COVID-19, uh, I think uh, many countries has their own uh, regulation for uh, the company of foreign foreigner to enter to their uh, country. For Thailand also, you know, it, uh, we also have our regulation. If you want to enter to Thailand at the moment during COVID-19, you know, we have to be quarantined for 14 days, you know, and we have um, uh, many types of quarantine. Uh, for example, um, if you want to stay in Thailand more than 14 days, you know, okay, you have to be quarantined for 14 days first, and then you have to stay at the hotel that uh, is the state quarantine. Or if you want to have the option, uh, like uh, you want to have your own accommodation, so uh, there would be, you know, the hotel that is authorized by the government. This is, you know, for the company or the foreign foreigner that would like to be in Thailand more than 14 days. But if you would like to stay in Thailand less than 14 days, you know, uh, you also has the choice, you know, to stay in Thailand less than 14 days. Okay, I show this slide. Um, uh, uh, we call the one that stay in Thailand less than 14 days is limited quarantine. But for this one, it's a little bit more difficult because you have special arrangement 
you know, you need to contact the con uh, disease control department, you know, in Thailand, you know, or you can contact BUI, BUI can facilitate to, you know, for arrangement to enter to Thailand. And, but you have, if you stay in Thailand less than 14 days, you have to send your exact plan of towering to Thailand. Yeah? And then you have to, you know, uh, fix your schedule in advance and send your uh, uh, schedule to the control, the, this is control department to consider. And then they will arrange a visit. You cannot go out of your plan. You cannot go out of other places besides the plan, the touring plan that you submit to the disease control department. And you have to pay, you know, for all the expense and the vehicle arrangement also has to be approved by the disease control department. This is, you know, just somebody for the foreign company, a foreigner that would like to enter to Thailand. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Sun Klin. Um, at this stage, um, I would like to just take a few um, moments to thank all our um, speakers, our panelists for today. This concludes our session. There are a few um, additional questions uh, that had been asked during the, the, uh, the registration process. These will be answered uh, directly via email as well. So once again, I'd like to thank everybody and now uh, pass it on again to Ms. Song Klin for her uh, final remarks as well. Would you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Before ending, you know, our webinar today, I would like to introduce, you know, our director uh, at our two office in America because it is the first contact that the investor or the one that are interested, you know, to do some business in Thailand can contact. Um, Mr. Itisho, which is the director of Los Angeles office, and Ms. Warawan is the director of New York office. So could you please introduce yourself first? Definitely. Right. Thank you for all of your participation for this webinar. And um, my team and, and, and I are based in New York, and we are here to help. If you have any question about investment in Thailand or any question about Thailand, we, we are very happy to help and, and, and assist you. Thank you. And <coughs> my name is Iti Short. I am the new director at the BUI in Los Angeles. So we, we're taking care of the Western part of the US. So if you have any questions uh, regarding this webinar or would like to learn more about investment opportunity in Thailand, so you please contact me. Thank you. Thank you, this two director. And then I would like to add more. If you need more information for your study, you know, you go to, you know, this QR code. You know, you will have a lot of details to do business in Thailand, regulation, role, and some other costs of doing business in Thailand. And if you feel convenient, you know, if you don't want to contact these two offices in America and you feel convenient to contact the headquarters, also we provide the contact and the phone number here. You know, you can contact this through this channel as well. Thank you very much. Once again, thank you very much uh, to all our distinguished speakers, guest panelists today. Very much appreciate um, you joining us and giving us a very good insight uh, in terms of opportunities for investment in Thailand's innovation ecosystem. Again, my name was Adrian DeVoe, uh, working at Research FDI as a consulting partner for the Thailand Board of Investment. The uh, webinar itself will be made available within the next few days online for future reference. And again, questions that weren't able to answer during uh, today's webinar will also be answered directly. 
I'll wish you uh, uh, a great rest of the day, great rest of the week, and, and a wonderful weekend coming up. Thank you very much.